We've long known that the process of destruction was an undertaking step by step that no one in 1933 had a clear idea of what would happen in 1936. And no one in 1936 knew about 1939, and no one even in 1939 foretold 1942. There was no blueprint. There was no central office. There was no planning in any fundamental central way of this process. And yet it reached a point after the Jews had been concentrated in ghettos within Polish cities, after they'd been deprived of livelihoods, after their food rations were cut, when the open question was asked, what now? Now we know what happened, but there is a strange darkness amidst all the thousands and tens of thousands of materials at our disposal pertaining to the central figure, the main character, Adolf Hitler. He was, in some sense at least, a man who spoke of rationality, yes, even of reason. He said, we must be anti-Semitic. But there are two kinds of anti-Semitism. There's the anti-Semitism of feeling, of gefühl, which spills over into the streets. That is not the kind of anti-Semitism that we want. We want one of reason, one which will develop in accordance with certain principles that will be rational that will accomplish something because the anti-Semitism of feelings has never accomplished anything. The Jew survived all these onslaughts and he's still here. Hitler was, is always depicted, if anything, as the most decisive man in history. Speer was once asked, how do you do know when Hitler made a decision? It's a very important question because as the Nazi regime developed over the years, his, the whole structure of decision-making was changed. At first, there were laws. Then there were decrees implementing laws. Then a law was made saying there shall be no law. Then there were orders and directives that were written down, but still published in ministerial gazettes. Then there was government by announcement. Orders appeared in newspapers. Then there were the quiet orders, the orders that were not published, that were within the bureaucracy, that were oral. And finally, there were no orders at all. Everybody knew what he had to do. But in such a situation, what is Hitler? And what is an order by Hitler? If he says, oh, I think we ought to do something, is that an order? And so Speer was asked the question, how did you know? He said that depended on his tone of voice. Oh, when he was very angry, we all assumed this was nothing. But when he spoke quietly and in a low tone, then we knew that a decision had been made. So it is. This enormous implication. Who did it? I've always believed it was a vast bureaucracy. One cannot destroy a people. It's not possible without employing all the institutions that a society has. 
the uprooting process alone required the specializations, the expertise of bureaucrats at all walks of life. Of course, the Nazi party had its little domains. But that is not to say that the destruction of the Jews was the work of pure Nazis, party members, initiators of Nazi party doctrines. But who were these initiators, these innovators, these bureaucrats? They were very well educated. Let me give you just three groups. The lawyers, the soldiers, and the physicians. The lawyers were everywhere. And they had to be. Because the process of destruction had to begin with ultra complex, I'm inclined to say surgical maneuverings to make certain that while the Jews were destroyed, the German population was protected. What, for example, do you do with a half Jew? What do you do with a mixed marriage? What do you do with a contract between a Jew and a non Jew, a Jewish corporation and a non Jewish corporation? How do you define the term Jewish corporation? And who do you suppose solved these problems? The lawyers, always. Oh yes, it was a legal proceeding. The military. No, the military were not charged with or even trusted with the destruction of the Jews. That was somebody else's work. However, they governed many countries, Norway, Belgium, France, Serbia, Greece. Uh, they were backup for uh, concentration camp security. They were giving logistic support to murder units operating inside their framework in occupied Russia. Oh, they were heavily involved. And it was a war in that sense against jury and the doctors. The ghetto was conceived of as a quarantine to prevent epidemics. Of course, the first killing operation, it must never be forgotten, was directed against the institutionalized Germans, those with uh, so-called mental illnesses, of whom there were 300,000. 80,000 were gassed. The children, by the way, were not gassed. They were starved. I speak of German children now. But the same process, the same personnel, the same techniques were used to gas the Jews. Thus, for example, the first commander of the Treblinka death camp was a psychiatrist. Oh, yes. Who did it? The professionals. Did they know what they were doing? Of course, they thought about it. Himmler, a man born in 1900, he commanded the assassin police. He had seen no action.